Hello, in this video we're going to look at the exponential family, specifically the chi-square distribution within the exponential family. Now that's the follow-up video from a video I did on finding the mean and the variance sort of generically from an exponential family. And there we showed that if you could write the distribution, the density, you know, probably or probably mass function in this form, then uh, we finding the mean and the variance is much easier. So specifically if you write it in canonical form, then the moments are the derivatives of this log partition that the A of eta. So let's see, let's show that the chi-square can be written in these forms and then we'll find the mean and the variance of the sufficient statistics. So here, and as we look at it, so to do this first one we need a function of the data function of the parameters times a function of the data and a function of the parameters. So here this is solely a function of the data, the x. So that's probably going to be our x of x. Um, here, um, well we don't know. So it's not even in the, we got to, let's take the log and then the e of this piece here and then see what we get. So this piece was written out front, and when we take the log, remember this is in the top, and so then the log of this, you know, the log of x, you can then you can multiply the exponent out front, and then this is minus the log of that, but the log of 2 raised to this power, you can take the k over 2 outside you know out front and then here this is just the log of of gamma of k over 2 whatever it is so this is actually in exponential form so this is h of x this is our function of our parameters k this is a function of our data it's log x and this is a function of k also so this is our log partition now to write this in canonical form which is this second form we have to think of this parameter as just eta. So it's just eta. But then we have to determine the log partition such that when we plug in the value of eta, which is k over 2 minus 1, we get this one back. And so this is the form here. And you can kind of see it on this first one. So if we plug in k over 2 minus 1, then here, in here, then we just get k over 2. So it's the log of gamma of k over 2, which is what this piece is. And then you can do it similarly here. And so this is the exponential f family, or the exponential, you know, in exp part of the exponential family, and it, it's written in canonical form here. Well, the beauty of that, taking derivatives of this, gives us the mean and the variance, or the, you know, the moments of our sufficient statistic. So let's do that. So here the, the mean of our sufficient statistic, which in this case is a log of x, is the first derivative of our log partition with respect to eta. Now we determined that the log partition was this value here. And now we'll take derivatives. Now this here, the derivative of the log of a gamma has a, a special name. It's called a digamma. And um, and it, it's called uh, psi of eta plus one. Now, here, you know, when you multiply the log of two in, when it's times one, it's a constant in respect to eta. But when it's with here, then you just get log of two back. And now we stick in what we know about eta, which is k over two minus one, and so we get this, and there is a function in R called digamma, so you can actually calculate the values here. So the derivative of the log of a gamma function is called a digamma. So this is the mean, that's the mean of the log of x. Now the variance of our sufficient statistics, so the variance of the log of x, is the second derivative of our log partition with respect to eta. So now we calculated the derivative up here, 
right here. It has to be in regards to eta. So we put it in, and then now we take the derivative of that, and we get the second derivative. Well, the second derivative, so let's, so the second derivative of a log of a gamma is called a trigamma, where you can think of it as the derivative of a digamma is called a trigamma, and I'll just write it as a prime, so it's the derivative of a digamma. And this is constant in regards to eta. So now we plug in what we know about eta, which is k over 2 minus 1, and we get a, a trigamma of k over 2. And in r, there's a r function called trigamma, and that's where it is. Well, that's the mean and the variance of, of, of a chi-squared distribution. Now, what's interesting, when I'm done here, I think I have four or five more videos, and I'm going to... Uh, run simulations on all these calculations and show that it is in fact true and I'm going to have to use the trigamma and the digamma function in R to show that these results hold. Well anyway that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.